Hey everyone, Shabby Gaming here, and welcome back to another episode of our WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. This is going to be our next episode of the Attitude Era's Friday Night Raw is War. So without further ado, let's have a quick look at the card. We're going to start things off with a tag team match as we see the Dudley Boys taking on the New Age Outlaws. Then we're going to see another opportunity here for Ultimo Dragon to get his first victory in the Attitude Era as he takes on Savio Vega. We're going to see a rivalry match here between Haku and Chris Jericho. Of course, the rivalry is between Haku and Kane, though, so you might see a little bit of a, a little bit of a cutscene in that one. We've got a Hell in a Cell qualifier for you as Sting takes on Booker T. We've got another Hell in a Cell qualifier as Shawn Michaels takes on the former World Heavyweight Champion Edge. Got another rivalry match here in the Battle of the Spears as Goldberg takes on Rhino. And then our main event this evening. What a main event that is. I actually believe, actually, at the top of my... No, it's not, is it? That is going to be the... Uh, I have no idea. It's The Undertaker versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Anyway, I'm just... Uh, my mind's gone blank who the champions are. Okay, ignore that. The champions are The Rock and Batista. So, yep, we've got The Undertaker, who is the number one contender for Batista's WWE Championship, taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin, who will be involved in our six-man Hell in a Cell match at the upcoming pay-per-view. So after all that complete blabbing and nonsense, let's get into our first match. So like I said, our first match will be the Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray and Devon taking on the New Age Outlaws, the Road Dog and Billy Gunn. And here we go after an incredibly long loading time once again. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what it is. It seems to be a lot longer in the universe mode than it actually is in uh, in exhibition. So hopefully uh, there's one thing they might fix pretty soon. This is my first tag team match since they released the most recent patch. And the most recent patch apparently does involve certain uh, improvements to tag team match AI. So hopefully we'll get to see a little bit of that here this evening. Now on to the, the news that I'm going to tell. I, some of you might not be too happy about this, but I am going to have to drop two rosters pretty soon. Um, I think I'm going to be dropping the retro roster because that is the one that seems to get the least views. So... Uh, that would probably make more sense. And I'm also going to drop Ring of Honor. I'm not going to drop Ring of Honor. I'm just going to merge it in with Global Force Wrestling. So we're just going to... We're still going to keep all of the Ring of Honor championships. And we're still going to be continuing on with the top prospect tournament. That's going to take place on Global Force Wrestling. Essentially, it's just a bit too difficult for me to be able to record seven episodes per week. Plus, especially this week, coming in with the G1 Climax Festival as well. It's just a bit too much for me. So... I'm dropping it down to four shows per week and then a pay-per-view. But the fact that we're dropping it down to four shows, that means that all four shows will get a, we'll get a pay-per-view every single month. And that means we'll also have feuds constantly in all the shows as well. So that should make the universe mode flow a bit better. We'll have a bit more cutscenes going on, feuds going on every single roster. So I think it's actually going to work out as, um, as a benefit for us, really. Thing is, I probably can scrape through doing seven shows a week, but at the end of the day... They wouldn't be very good. I'm, I'm rushing through some of these as it is now anyway. It's not too bad recording this one because it is now Friday night. I'm not rushing around to get to bed for work in the morning or anything like that. So I can just record these for as long as I really want tonight. So uh, yeah, it's it's not too bad at the moment. But on a normal night when I get home from work, it's so difficult to get a recording done, get it edited, get it uploaded and all that sort of stuff for you. And I don't want to put up shoddy content. I'd rather, I'd rather put up less videos but make sure those videos are good than just put up loads of videos of of mediocre stuff so that's the main reason why i'm doing that and i'm hoping you guys can understand that and there's not going to be too many problems but also by dropping those two rosters it should free up some extra space as well to uh, to get some more people downloaded now there's not going to be a lot because i think there's only about six cores in retro roster at the moment that's all i'm using and uh, ring of honor like i said we're probably going to keep most of those across in global force wrestling anyway but we are looking to bring a women's division into the Attitude Era pretty soon. We're, I'm pretty sure we're going to get the, the Legends downloadable content pretty soon because the patch that was released yesterday involved all of that content, but it's not been made available to purchase yet. So that's the patch that involves... Sorry, that's the downloadable content that involves Lita and Trish Stratus. So as soon as we get that, would be sort of... be a bit terrible not to use them, wouldn't it, really? So we'd have those two. I'm also looking for a few other women as well. I know there's a pretty good Victoria on the... Uh, on the community creation, so I'll be looking to try and download that. I think there's also... Um, I'm not quite sure who else to get for the Women's Attitude Era. I'm thinking... I'm struggling to tell the truth. We've got Stephanie McMahon already. 
So we can use her as a wrestler in the Attitude Era, of course being backed by DX. She's not going to be the strongest in the world, but she might be able to. We might be still like a storyline with uh, with DX helping her through to get the championship. Um, so that's three. Victoria makes it four. I'm thinking maybe Gail Kim as well. Not quite sure if Gail Kim really matches the, the, the right time, though. There's Bubba Ray Dudley going in for a pin here. It's enough for a two count. So uh, maybe Ivory as well. I'll have to just sort of have a look around. We'll use Alundra Blaze when um, when that gets released as well. Part of the... Um, she's obviously part of the Hall of Fame pack, which is probably going to come out a little bit later. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the sort of idea. I'm also going to be bringing a women's division into our Global Force Wrestling brand. That's a little bit more easy. We've got uh, we've got quite a lot of names we can put into that one. People like Eva Lise, um, Sexy Star, there's Candice LeRae. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing. Um, yeah, so it's been a bit more easy. I think ODB, Maria Canellis. Um, so yeah, that's been a bit easier. And uh, I'm just trying to think of some more now. We could also use Gail Kim in there as well. So that's where the bigger plan's coming forward and uh, obviously going to bring a few more people into the universe mode as soon as we uh, as soon as we get some more people created. There are some absolutely fantastic calls out there now. You'll see a video uploaded very, very soon, I think, maybe even before this one, which was the Global Force Wrestling uh, G1 Climax Draw. And if you've not seen that yet, it's worth going to have a look because uh, I've downloaded two brand new calls. Well, they're not brand new. They're, they're, they're to go over ones I already had. One of them is Kazuchika Okada, and that looks absolutely fantastic. Compared to the one we used to have, this one looks really, really good. And there's also an upgraded Zack Sabre Jr. as well. Of course, as of Monday this week, we're going to be going through with the G1 Climax Festival. That's going to be a fantastic tournament. It's going to be seven days long. And some of the groups, some of the matches we're going to see over the next week are incredible. So, yeah, be sure to keep an eye out for that. Like I said, seven days long. A video uploaded Monday all the way through till Sunday. There's Devon. Big pile driver there on Billy Gunn. This could be all, maybe. The Dudley boys could be picking up a victory. In for the pin goes Devon. One, two. And he gets it just in time. Road Dog was too slow. Into the ring. And the Dudley boys are victorious here in quite a quick match. Over the New Age Outlaws. I think it was actually the Dudley boys that did get... Yeah, the Dudley boys lost their opportunity for the Tag Team Championships at Backlash. So I wasn't expecting them to do too well here, but here they are again with another victory. Forcing their way back into the title picture. Still got a couple of weeks to decide our number one contender uh, for that championship. And I think we might try and do some sort of number one contendership match next week. Not quite sure. Maybe, maybe we'll have one more match next week. Between two completely different teams. Maybe. Who could we have? Maybe someone we haven't really seen a lot of as yet. Maybe we haven't used the um, the corporation's tag team of Paul White and Ken Shamrock. Maybe they should get an opportunity. Maybe against uh, either the Hardy Boys or the Nation of Domination. Or something along them sort of lines. And the winner of that match will face off against the Dudley Boys. in number one contendership match to go on and face... The world's greatest tag team again at our next pay-per-view. That's a possibility. To wait and see what happens. And here you see Devon Dudley with a big power driver on Billy Gunn. Gunn was there. He was he was out straight away. You saw that. Just flopping to one side. And in he goes with a pin. You see Road Dog was just too slow. By the time he got in the ring and got across, it, it was already over. So a great win here for the Dudleys. Puts them straight back into the title picture here for the Tag Team Championships on our Attitude Era roster. And of course the Dudley Boys will be turning up pretty soon on our current day roster as well. I keep saying that and I keep forgetting to debut them every single week. So eventually they will make their appearance. Maybe after Extreme Rules, maybe during Extreme Rules. They're the sort of team that would probably advantage from debuting at Extreme Rules really, wouldn't they? And here we go, match number two this evening. It's Savio Vega taking on Ultimo Dragon. And here we go. Now, Ultimo Dragon made his debut last week and lost to D'Lo Brown in a match that I was hoping he was going to win just to give him a, a nice little boost straight into his career here. Maybe D'Lo Brown should deserve a, uh, a Cruiserweight Championship match just from that victory of the big debut in 
Ultimo Dragon, but another opportunity here for Dragon to pick up his first victory on the Attitude Era roster. Taking on Savio Vega, who I'm thinking of putting as part of the Nation of Domination. I think he was part of the Nation for a very short amount of time. And it would give him a little bit more relevance, maybe, if he's a uh, part of a faction here. And I think Ultimo Dragon was someone who was suggested by... Oh, I can't remember your name off the top of my head. Now it's D... DG Gaming. DG Gaming? I should know, because I'm actually subscribed to you as well. I'm just uh, whizzing down my... Uh, whizzing down my sub... Oh, I've got too many people I'm subscribed to to even notice which one it was. Um, yeah, I'm sure it was like DJ HD Gaming or something like that. Um, sorry, I'll find you. I'll I'm sure I'll find you. I will find you. <laughs> that did seem pretty scary, didn't it? Um, where are you? God, I've had so many comments over the last few weeks. Thank you, you guys, for for all of your um, for all your great comments and support to some of my videos, it's been it's been amazing to see uh, just just how much this channel has grown since the 2K16 game came out. I really do appreciate it all. Um, where are you? You've completely disappeared, mate. I, I apologise. It's DGHD Gaming. I'm sure that's who it was. If it wasn't, I'm apologise if I if I've given away your funder to somebody else but I'm sure you suggested Ultima Dragon a few weeks back we brought him in finally he was supposed to be in for the backlash pay-per-view and I completely forgot to download him and forgot to put him in the cruiserweight ladder match which was unfortunate but uh he made his debut last week losing unfortunately to Dilo Brown but he's having a much better time here this evening against Savio Vega almost picking up a free count there just over a two Ultimate Dragon now bringing Vega back up to his feet and Vega just tripping Dragon. Trying to get back into this match now. Looking for a Fisherman's Vega there, but Ultima Dragon reversed it into a Northern Light Suplex. Beautiful move. Decides not to bridge and pin though. I think Vega's feet were underneath the ropes and Ultima Dragon's great ring awareness. Dragon now bringing Vega back up to his feet once again. This is taking him up. Sit out. Power bomb. Big, big move for a cruiserweight. Now bringing Vega into the middle of the ring. He's going to roll him over into the pin. He goes. This could be all. One. Two. Oh, and again, Savio Vega kicks out. We almost had Ultimo Dragon's first victory here in the universe mode. Dragon is twisting the head of Vega. And Lucha in it up now. And I think I mentioned last week, it's one of my prized possessions. I have a signed Ultimo Dragon figure, an imported figure from Japan as well. I met him a couple of years ago. And he was selling these signed figures for 50 quid. And it's one of the best purchases I've ever made. And here he is now of his first victory in our Attitude Era roster of our WWE 2K16 Universe mode. Maybe there's going to be a lot more for Ultimo Dragon. I was a bit worried last week when he lost that... Um, that debut match against Dino Brown, but hopefully now with this victory, he can build upon this and maybe even get himself a championship match at our coming pay-per-view, which I still can't remember what it is. I cannot remember. I, I'm sure I checked last week as well, and I still can't remember what it is. I better find out because uh, I need to start advertising it correctly, don't I, really? I've not read it down, have I? Nope, I've not written it down. I'm, I'm, I'm really terrible at this, aren't I? I'm bloody terrible at this. I will find out. And I will let you know. But for now, we know that Ultimo Dragon picked up this victory. And I'm pretty sure our Cruiserweight Champion, Dean Malenko, would have been backstage. Very interested in this match. He knows that Dragon is a, is a force to be reckoned with in the Cruiserweight division. And with Dragon picking up a victory here, maybe things are about to start to heat up. Uh, 
And our next match here this evening is going to be our first rivalry match of the evening as Haku takes on Chris Jericho. Oh, and it's Kane attacking Haku as he made his way to the ring. And just feeding him into the waiting Chris Jericho. What can Chris Jericho do here? Straight into the lion salt. In for the Pingos Jericho and surely, surely it can't be. It's not. Haku does kick out on the verge of a free. But has the damage been done already by Kane? Jericho bringing Haku back up to his feet. Now has him in the front chancery. Has him by his barnet. Sending Haku over the top rope. And Jericho just needs to pick off Haku here. Spikes DDT on the apron. And you've got to wonder whether Haku's hair might have uh, softened the blow of that big DDT. I'd be surprised if Haku can go much longer in this match. He got attacked by Kane during his entrance. He's been caught with Jericho's lion salt. And then DDT'd on the apron. But we all know that Haku is one of the most legitimately tough guys in wrestling history. The sort of guy that no one liked to, uh, no one liked to tangle with in, the, in any wrestling company. Actually, he wrestled here. Of course, he was in both WWF and in WCW as well. Reverse Dragon Sleeper there by Haku. And just look how wrenched Jericho's neck was there. That looked horrible. Jericho sending Haku off the ropes, and there's a sling blade style neck breaker. And Jericho now going up top. What does he have planned? It's a big diving elbow on Haku. Straight into the pin goes Jericho once again. One, two. And again, Haku just on the brink of a free match to kick out. Jericho now sending Haku into the corner. Haku fights out with that back elbow. Jericho spinning Haku around. It's around the back of him and now drops him in that atomic drop. And you've got to think where Haku's mind is in this one as well. After being attacked by Kane before the match. It's probably, uh, as much as it's going to damage him, it's also probably riled him up a little bit. When you get anger and you've got the, uh, the adrenaline rushing through your veins. Maybe he might be able to take a little bit more damage than what he normally would. Well, he probably is here because he's been hit with some vicious moves already here this evening. And he's still continuing onwards. Haku now going up to the middle rope. And there's a big splash on Jericho. Haku bringing Jericho back up to his feet now. Quick roll up by Haku. Could he pick up the victory here? One. No, he can't. Jericho kicks out after a one. Jericho clambering back up to his feet and Haku is there once again. Haku now dropping Jericho in the atomic drop. Rolls him over. Brings him into the middle of the ring. What's Haku got planned here? Bringing Jericho up onto all fours. Now just clubbing blow across the back. Sending Jericho back down face first. Haku with a the snap there now. And again just the chin lock on Jericho. Wrenching back. Very uncomfortable position for Jericho this one. And Haku's aware of that, holds it for as long as he possibly can. Remember, we still have two big Hell in a Cell qualifier matches coming for you this evening. Remember, that is going to be for the Rocks. Whoa, big super kick there by Haku. This could be all. One, two. It's only a two count. Yes, the Rock will be defending his World Heavyweight Championship at our next pay-per-view in a six-man Hell in a Cell match. That's going to be uh, The Rock defending against Psycho Sid, Rikishi, Stone Cold. And the next winners of our next two matches is going to be either Sting or Booker T. And either Chris, uh, Shawn Michaels or Edge. Jericho taking Haku up. Powerbomb. <clears throat> holds the grip, takes him up for a second. And holds the grip and takes him up for a further trio. Powerbomb's there by Jericho. Straight into the pin he goes. One. Two. 
And Jericho has got it. Jericho picks up the victory here over Haku, but the damage was done by Kane before the match had even started, attacking Haku during his entrance. And I think that was just on Haku's mind the whole way through. And obviously Jericho pounced upon the damage already done by Kane to really add insult to injury. Haku did very well to last as long as he did, to tell the honest truth. But eventually Jericho was just a bit too much for him. There was a pin after that diving elbow, only enough for a two count. This is Haku with that chin lock applied. And there's that super kick by Haku as well. That's when I thought that Haku might just have this. But it wasn't enough. It was only a two. And then Jericho with this triple power bomb. The second. And then the third. So that triple power bomb on the guy the size of Haku is um it's pretty impressive. And you see the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And it was enough to keep Haku down for the actual free count. Chris Jericho victorious. How much does he owe Kane, though, for this victory? They said it was Kane who attacked Haku during his entrance. Distracting him. And allowing Jericho to really just pick up the pieces and finish Haku off. And here we have the update for the rivalry between Kane and Haku. Payback. Kane returned a measure of payback against Haku. So this has given Haku nothing, but Haku has now become enemies with Chris Jericho. That's interesting. And Kane, no, Chris Jericho has, has gained another little boost. He's now become allies with Kane somehow, and he's uh, enemies with Haku as well. So that's been a fantastic match for Chris Jericho. He's, uh, he's gained a new ally. And he's also gained uh, some more momentum in this universe mode. Chris Jericho is quite a big name in this universe already. So by having that extra momentum, that is really going to boost him up. And uh, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna become quite difficult to beat. Unfortunately, because he was locked in this match, I did want to have him in the Hell in a Cell qualifiers. But because he was locked in this match against uh, Haku with a rivalry, uh, he's lost his opportunity there. But the Intercontinental Championship is always an opportunity for Chris Jericho at our next pay-per-view maybe. And our next match here this evening is going to be the Hell in a Cell qualifier between Sting and Booker T. And here we go. Who is it going to be who is going to join The Rock, Psycho Sid, Rikishi and Stone Cold Steve Austin inside that huge steel structure? And I'm, I'm sort of debating, and I think you guys might have to let me know in the comment section what you think is the best idea. I'm debating changing. I know I've been piping on about a Hell in a Cell match. But I'm debating changing it to an elimination chamber. Just because I don't think the uh, the game works really well with a six-man Hell in a Cell. I don't think the uh, the AI likes to escape the cage and that sort of thing. So that's why I'm sort of leaning towards the idea of maybe swapping it across an elimination chamber match. But I will do whatever you guys want to see. So let me know in the comment section below. Would you rather me keep it as a Hell in a Cell? Or would you rather me change it to an, elim an elimination chamber? just to try and get the best possible match. Sting dropping an elbow inside the knee of Booker T. And Booker T's been lucky here because I did want to have... Uh, I wanted to have Sting versus Michaels and then er uh, Jericho versus Edge. And then because of the... Uh, because of the situation with Jericho being locked into the feud match with Haku for Kane, uh, I've changed it slightly to have Sting versus Booker T and Michaels versus Edge. So either way, we're going to have two great competitors going into that six-man match at our next pay-per-view. Again, let me know in the comment section below. Hell in a Cell or Elimination Chamber. It's your decision. I'll do whatever you guys want to watch. Booker T went for a big kick then. And I think Sting caught his arms. Or caught his legs, sorry. Now he has his arms in that attempted sort of razor's edge power bomb, But Booker T slid out the back. And pretty soon, I think, I can't, remember what, I can't remember what Legends pack it is. We're going to get one of the Legends pack is going to involve Stevie Ray. So we'll have Harlem Heat here in our Attitude Era. That's at some point. It's going to be an interesting one. We actually brought Stevie Ray in as a created wrestler on our 2K15 universe mode. So it'd be great to get the real one on this game as Sting goes to the pin after the neckbreaker. One, 
two. Only enough for a two count. So yeah, that's coming up pretty soon. I don't actually, I can't remember off the top of my head who is in that first DLC. Let me have a quick look. I might go a little bit, uh, not quiet, but a little bit away from the microphone. I'm not, I've only literally moved about four inches to the left, but uh, WWE 2K16 DLC. Right. Who is it going to be? I can't believe they still haven't released dates for the DLC. That's quite annoying. I'd like to know when I get certain people so I can sort of plan the universe to have certain tournaments and stuff like that. But right, the next one is going to be the Legends Pack, I believe. Uh, and this website doesn't tell me who is on the Legends Pack. It does not. Let's try this website. I'm pretty sure Trish and Lita are both on there. Um, right. Are you going to tell me? Nope, you're not on there either. How is it so difficult to find the uh, to find the bloody DLC? Booker T have a Russian no, a front to stroke style move there on Sting. Right, I think I found it now. I think I have found it. Big spine bust there by Booker T. Right, the Legends pack um, is Big Boss Man, Dusty Rhodes, Lita, Mr. Perfect, Roddy Piper, and Trish Stratus. So we could use all of those people in our Attitude Era, really. Mr. Perfect, definitely. Big Boss Man coming in as part of the corporation. Uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper was in WCW in the Attitude Era. And then obviously Trish Stratus and Lita to be part of our very new Women's division here. Booker T with a scissor kick in for the pin. And Booker T has won. I was not expecting that at all, I must admit. But Booker T is going to be in that six-man match. Be it Hell in a Cell, be it Elimination Chamber, you guys will decide. But that is a, a very interesting result. I was expecting Sting, I must admit. I know they're giving Booker T a, a boost in stats this year. Last year, he was pretty terrible. So, yeah, this year he's going to be a lot more effective, I think. And that is a big victory. As he seemed lining Sting up. Springs off the far ropes and there is the scissor kick. So, Booker T is going to our next pay-per-view and Sting suffers another loss. Sting is not doing very well in this universe mode at all. I expected better from Sting, I really did. But Booker T, that's, that's ruined it, isn't it? Booker T looking at his hand. He's the five-time champion so far. Is he going to be the six-time champion? We will find out at the next pay-per-view, which I'm going to have to find out what it's called because I'm getting embarrassed by not knowing. And like I said, we could see Booker T involved in the tag team division pretty soon as well. When, when Steve Ray becomes available, that's not until... Which pack is that going to be? That's going to be in the Hall of Famer showcase. So we'll be getting that. I think that's the next one. And then the last one is going to be the Future Stars, which involves Blake Murphy, Diego, Fernando, and, of course, Samoa Joe. And our next match here this evening, we're going to decide our final entrant into that big six-man match at our next pay-per-view. Is it Shawn Michaels taking on Edge? And here we go. Now, with the power of editing, you guys won't have just seen, but... I've just been out and I've checked. The next pay-per-view is Unforgiven. I saw Michael straight away locking in a figure four leg lock on edge on the outside. Right, I'm just going a little bit quiet there for a second because I had to plug my controller in because as you saw at the end of the last match, my battery is dying. So yeah, the winner of this match will be the last person entered into that six-man match. Like I said, you guys are going to let me know whether you'd rather see a Hell in a Cell match, which I don't think the AI is too good at, but if that's what you want to see, then that's what we'll do against, or, or either an Elimination Chamber match, which I think the game is set up a little bit better for, but like I said, it's whatever you guys want to watch, that's what I will make. And it's Edge, who is, of course, the former World Heavyweight Champion, lost the belt to The Rock at the pay-per-view and this is his opportunity to get himself back in 
that title picture. Big boot there by Edge, not a normal move we see from him. Sure, Michael manages to fight out of that from Edge. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna we're gonna sort of run the retro roster down now. Our very first retro roster pay-per-view is probably gonna be our very last retro roster pay-per-view. I think we'll probably bring it back for Royal Rumble time. I think that's definitely something we'll do. Uh, we're only doing five shows a week. I might be able to catch up a little bit as well. That could be an aim. If I can catch up a little bit, then try and uh, try and match our universe mode to the same sort of time frame as the WWE. But then again, thinking about it, thinking about it, it's Royal Rumble next month. Yes, that's it. It's Royal Rumble next month. How cool is that? And I don't think I'm going to be able to catch up that much because we are going to be. So we're going to be in June, I think. Maybe uh, March, April, May. Maybe we're not. I don't know. Does this game start in... This game starts in May, I think, isn't it? No. This game must start in April. So once we're done Extreme Rules, we go into May. So we're going to have... No, I'm not going to catch up. That's like seven months to catch up. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to try my best over the Christmas period to... Uh, to get some more videos done, but I want to try and do some other little bits and bobs as well. Some of you guys might know I am doing a Fallout 4 playthrough, so if you are interested in that, then you can find that on my channel. And I think over Christmas I start, I might start recording a Minecraft series as well, but that's only going to be, that's only going to be like one or two episodes a week. Of course, this will still continue on, but just with the four rosters and the pay-per-view every single Sunday. And of course, we'll continue our random match series as well. So we're gonna have. A lot of videos uploaded. I'm just trying to vary it a little bit, just to uh, just to try and catch everyone's imagination as much as I possibly can. Great moonsault there by Shawn Michaels. Now bringing Edge back up to his feet, but Edge reverses by throwing Michaels straight over the top of his head. Edge now bringing Michaels into the middle of the ring is going to go for the pin. One, two. It's only a two count. As there's noises in the back of my flat for no reason. Okay, I. You know what? I am convinced my flat is haunted. I don't believe in ghosts normally. But I am convinced this place is haunted. Things keep happening. Things keep moving. I was sat here on my desk the other night watching a pen on my desk move. And I'm not, not just talking like a slight little movement. I'm talking it was... You know on your pen when you've got like the little thing that hooks onto your pocket? That little uh, bit that comes across? When you put one of those pens down on your, ta on your desk... It always flops the one... I've just done it. It always flops the one side. Right? You can try it at home if you've got one of these pens. Just drop it down and it flops to one side. I had that on my desk the other day. And no word of a lie, I watched it on several occasions move. Nothing was touching it. Nothing was attached to it. It moved from uh, from one side. Flipped over to the other side. And about 30 seconds later, flipped back. Just like I was doing it with my own hand. But obviously, I weren't touching it, so... Yeah, there's some freaky shit going on in this place, I must admit. But then again, it's not going to... Oh, there we go. Sweet chin music there by Shawn Michaels. Yeah, if the ghost is not going to bother me, I'm not going to bother it. And Shawn Michaels, terrible ring positioning. Edge's arm was underneath the ropes. And Shawn Michaels has uh, dropped a bollock there, I think. He could have had that match won there. But due to that little slip-up in concentration, Edge still continues on in this one. But for how long as Michaels throws him shoulder first into the turnbuckle? Now Michaels just stomping the neck area of Edge now as well. I'm sorry if you can hear me clicking in the background. Uh, as I said, to get all these videos done, I do have to rush through them all. And I'm currently trying to edit a video on my laptop that's just loaded up while I'm recording this one at the same time. And Edge is lining Shawn Michaels up here. Is he looking for a spear, maybe? And there it is, a big spear by Edge on Shawn Michaels. And why isn't Edge going for the pin? He's taunting Michaels. Oh, I thought they might have changed this in the patch, but evidently not. They really, they uh, the superstars like to go for their, their comeback moves. Even if they've just used their finisher, that is always their priority thing to do. But it might be still enough... Spear by Edge, come back, and then an execution. Oh. Oh, Nelly. We all saw that, didn't we? We all saw what just happened there. Edge picked up the victory. 
but Mr. Michaels' hand was on the ropes. So, yeah, where do we stand with that then? Where do we stand with that? There's no more space left in the match. Edge has just taken the last position in that match. Do we think maybe next week there could be a rematch between Edge and Shawn Michaels? I think that, I don't know, because Edge won the match. Edge, if that, if that pinfall took place anywhere else in the ring, then I think Edge would have definitely got the free count. But in all fairness to Shawn Michaels, he had his hand on the ropes. That should not have been a free count. So uh, it's a tricky situation to be in. But for me, for me, I think we have to have a rematch next week because that's just not fair on Shawn Michaels. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think we need to have a rematch? Or are you happy with Edge going forward to that big six-man match at Unforgiven? As you can see there, Shawn Michaels' hand on the ropes. Clear, clear as day. Clear as day for us, but the referee couldn't see it, of course. The, the pin was in the way. Yeah, what do you guys think? Comment section below. Do we just take Edge straight through to Unforgiven? Or do we have Edge versus Shawn Michaels, a return match next week on Monday Night Raw? Well, Friday Night Raw is war, actually, not Monday Night Raw. Let me know what you guys think. But at the moment, at least, Edge is going on to Unforgiven. And our next match here this evening is going to be another rivalry match as Goldberg takes on Rhino in a battle of the spears. On Kevin Nash attacking Rhino during his entrance. And of course, that is the rivalry here. It's Kevin Nash and Rhino. And it's a bit of a shame that the game has picked to use exactly the same cutscene as what we've already seen earlier on this evening in the match between Kane and Haku, but I suppose that's just luck of the draw. Oh, Kohlberg nearly had the free count straight away. I don't, I don't think they ever get the free count straight away, even after using a finisher or a, a signature move so early in the match, but I think it definitely gives you an advantage going on. The longer this match goes now, I think the more... It's going to be in Goldberg's favour. And I think Goldberg probably would have been the favourite to start things off anyway. And again, Goldberg is somebody I wanted to have involved in the um, in the qualifiers here this evening. But unfortunately, uh, once again, he was tied up in this rivalry match. And obviously, you can't change rivalry matches on this game because it then just completely confuses the entire game. And it will, it will delete the rivalry and all that sort of stuff. So you have to leave who's in the match to who's in the match, unfortunately. Not a major problem, I suppose. Referee's up to a seven count now, and Goldberg back in the ring. Goldberg had a chance to maybe win that one by count out, but he goes back on the outside to continue the assault on Rhino. Probably a wise idea because, like I said, Goldberg um, picks up a victory here. It's going to look good for him in the uh, the championship rankings. Of course, Rhino is no easy feat in this roster. Also, some we will see in our. He's currently in Ring of Honor, but like I said, we're going to be sort of merging Ring of Honor with Global Force Wrestling. So I'm not sure if he'll make his way over to Global Force Wrestling or whether we'll just keep him here on the Attitude Era and in NXT. And obviously as a backup to the Dudley Boys in the current day roster, as he currently is at the moment. Goldberg just taking Rhino out with that elbow to the face. Now back in the ring. Goldberg's lining Rhino up. And this could be a very fast match indeed. If Goldberg gets his way, he has Rhino hooked. Takes him up. Goes for a match. And there is the jackhammer. One, two. And there you go. Goldberg picks up a quick victory here over Rhino. But of course, Rhino was attacked during his entrance by Kevin Nash. Which has probably affected Rhino. And another thing I'm a bit surprised that no one suggested so far is Goldberg versus Ryback. So, I can say no one has suggested that as a random match yet. If that's something you want to see, drop it in the comment section below and I'll give you a shout out. I'm sure I just heard voices. There's some strange shit going on in this flat. There really is. You know, you just get that feeling you're being watched. All the hairs on my back of my neck I've got up now as well. I'm going to put the light on. Goldberg is victorious. Yeah, I'm not... I don't know what it is. I'm not happy at the moment. Yeah, but I say Goldberg victorious here. 
We'll have to find something for Goldberg to do at this pay-per-view, or maybe even the next one. I say this one's uh, very much almost booking itself. We'll definitely see a match for Goldberg, I think. Be that on the main card or be it on the pre-show. I think it's definitely something we need to, to continue to push Goldberg and see just how far he can go. And here is a quick update for the rivalry here between Kevin Nash and Rhino. Dangerous attack. Kevin Nash attacked Rhino before their match. So as you can see from this, Goldberg has gained, he's gained a momentum boost and become allies with Kevin Nash. He's also become more prideful, more bold from it as well. And Rhino is now enemies with Kevin Nash. I would have thought he'd be enemies with him anyway since we're in a feud together, but there you go. And he's also become more prideful and bold as well. So a, a great match. This has been for Goldberg. He's gained up a bit of momentum, which is really going to help him. Like I said, we're going to try and give him as many opportunities as possible to really show what he's got and maybe get himself involved in the championship picture at some point. And now it's time for our main event here this evening. It's the number one contender for the WWE Championship, The Undertaker, taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin. And here we see Austin and Taker staring each other down. And what's this? This is the, the music of Batista. And here comes the WWE Champion, Batista. As you can see, really getting into the Undertaker's head here. Taker wants him out. But Batista's like, no. I'm sitting down here in commentary for this match. So this is interesting. Will the, will the attendance of Batista affect the number one contender of the Undertaker at all? And the match is underway. Oh, that bell was a lot louder than normal. I don't know why. Am I just imagining that? I'm just going to put my controller back on charge. We're back in a second. There you go. It took a bit longer than normal because I couldn't find the old, but there you go. Right, so Undertaker in control here. Of course, Taker is the number one contender for that WWE Championship. Held by the man sat at ringside at the moment, Batista. And of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin's not doing too bad for himself either. He's going to be involved in that big six-man match at Unforgiven. Like I said, it's your guys' decision. Hell in a cell or, or Elimination Chamber. Like I said, I think the Elimination Chamber might be the better match for you to watch. If you prefer to see a Hell in a Cell, that is completely up to you guys. Backbreaker there by Stone Cold Steve Austin. And this is going to be quite an even match, this one. Either of these two guys could come out victorious. I'm thinking of Batista trying to get in the head of The Undertaker. If Taker picks up a couple of losses, maybe, then uh, then who knows what might happen. It might be uh, might be the case of picking up a cold streak and making it more more easy for... Uh, more easy? Easier for, uh, for Batista to pick up a victory. Taker, though, in control of Austin at the moment, at least. Taker bringing Austin into the middle of the ring, and there's a big backbreaker by Taker. And just raking his foot across the face of Austin now, and locking him into that headlock as well. Big elbow by Taker. And take it is dominating Austin here, actually. I must admit, I expected a bit more of an even match, but Taker's taken control so far. Clubbing blow across the back of Austin and another one as well. Now Taker bringing Austin up and snake eyes on the top rope. Taker now bringing Austin into the middle ring. He's going to go for the pin. One. Only a one count. Austin kicked out that pretty easily. There's a crowd of chanting for The Undertaker. Big fan favourite here, of course. Austin with a shoulder block, Taker, Undertaker down. Now slamming the arm of Taker into the mat as well. Austin bringing Taker back up to his feet and Taker sends Austin into the corner. And you see Batista getting the attention of The Undertaker. Undertaker joining Batista on the outside now. 
Both guys getting in each other's face. This match is what's going to take place. And Unforgiven. And Batista saying he had nothing to do with it. He was just he was just in Taker's face there. He was just cheering on Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Batista looks like his work is done here. He's leaving ringside by the looks of it. As Austin continues the assault. Slamming Taker's face into the barricade as well. I don't think Batista has left. I think he might just be out of shot, is he? Or he might have left, actually. I thought I just saw him out of shot there for a second, but it might be my reflection in the glass. That's the way it works, isn't it? Taking our bring in. Austin back up to his feet and slides back into the ring. Referee's up to a six count. And yes, Batista has left the ringside area. Damage has been done. He's got in the head of of the Undertaker. I think that's all he wanted to do. Big powerbomb there by Austin on Taker. Not the sort of move you expect to see from Austin on Taker either. You expect that the way round, if anything. Austin Fez press and the punches now to Taker. In for the pin he goes. One, two. Oh, Austin nearly picks up the free count. Batista's work was nearly done. Austin with a bulldog. Now there is wrenching back at the arms of Undertaker again. Austin looks like he's lining Taker up. Is he going to go for the big finish here maybe? Boot to the stomach and there's the stunner. Taker already busted open at some point in this match, but I think Austin just might have put the final cherry on the cake. And there you go, Stone Cold Steve Austin picks up a victory over The Undertaker, and I think Batista's plan worked excellently. Batista really got The Undertaker's head here this evening, and even when Taker was starting to come into control of this match, Batista managed to distract him once again and allow Austin to pick up momentum. And there's the big stunner, which finally finished Undertaker off. Big advantage here for Batista. And we'll have a quick look before the end of this video of what that does for the feud. Why haven't they got the Austin winning, uh, the Austin winning thingy where he's drinking all the beer? I'm going to have to double check I'm using the right Austin here, you know. One question I am going to ask you guys, if any of you know, how do I change the win motion? So this little video here you've just seen of Austin winning the match, how do I change that? I've been through moveset, I've been through credit wrestling, I can't see it anywhere. So if you know, please let me know in the comment section below because I really want to change uh, the one we've got for Nia Jax because it's just far too girly and teenager-ish for, for Nia Jax, really. So let's have a quick look at the, uh, the update on the feud between Undertaker and Batista before we go. Here we are. Rising tensions, intensity building between Champion Batista and The Undertaker after their confrontation. So The Undertaker has got some momentum going anyway. He's become slightly more prideful, persevering and bold. And Stone Cold Steve Austin has gained... Oh, that's a great one for Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's got some... I'm just babbling on here. He has gained a, a momentum boost and a hot streak as well. So that's really going to help him out when he goes into this big six-man match at uh, the upcoming Unforgiven pay-per-view. But anyway, guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. And of course, if you have, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It does help me out a lot. It makes the video a lot easier for people to find. And of course, that makes the channel grow. And of course, if you're not already, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. A lot more 2K16 footage coming your way. Uh, we've got our universe mode, which will shortly be dropping down to four shows per week uh, and a pay-per-view every single weekend. And, of course, we're doing our random match series as well. So that's going to be uploaded, hopefully, one random match every single day. And, of course, I'm doing Fallout 4 at the moment as well. If that's something you're interested in, you can find that on my channel as well. I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Retro Rosters Saturday Night Main Event.